In the last video, we moved away from playgrounds and started investigating Xcode itself. We looked at the different parts of the screen and we saw how to run an app and stop an app. In this video, we'll take a closer look at the parts of Xcode, specifically focusing on uh, how to build a simple user interface using the Interface Builder and also how to add objects to the view. So all I've done so far is I've created a new Xcode project. I've called it IB Basics, and I've started the simulator just so uh, we don't have to wait for it to run each time. So let me go ahead and stop it running, and it goes back to the normal simulator. And let's start by looking at the main storyboard, which hopefully you remember from last time. So I'm going to click on that and wait for that to open up. And you can see I get my typical phone view. Notice I'm looking at it as an iPhone 8. I'm going to try to get it to match iPhone 10R. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can do that. That's 10S, 10R. So I'll click on that one. And so you can see it looks the same as my simulator I'm going to run. So yeah, I'm going to click on minus just to. If I hold down the option key and scroll up and down, I can change the view. So I'm going to get it so I could just about fill the screen. That's pretty good right there. Okay, so a couple of things to notice. Uh, on this side here is what's called the document outline, and it keeps track of everything that's in my current view. This button down here toggles whether it's open or closed. So that's closed, that's open. A lot of times if you're just laying things out, it's easier to, to close the document outline. When I have a lot of things uh, on my view, it's very easy just to select them from here. So you can decide whether you want it open or closed. I'm going to leave it open for right now. So again, we saw this when we ran. There was nothing on there. Let's start to add something to our, our view itself. So to do that, I'm going to use this button up here, which is my library button. And I'm going to click on it. And when I do, you'll see that it opens up this panel with a list of objects. And if I scroll through, I can see that these are all the different objects I can add to my view. And you should recognize some of these from the apps you may have used on your phone or iPad. Since there are so many, it's often helpful just to type uh, what you're looking for. So I know I'm going to add a label. And so if I start typing label, it comes right up. So to get a label on my screen, all I do is click and drag over to the screen, and I can put it on there. Notice that when I do so, I'm getting these helpful dotted lines from Xcode so that I can easily lay out where I want things to be. So you can see there's one to center it horizontally. I can center it vertically as well. If I want to put it up in the corner, it shows me where what's called the safe area is so I don't accidentally put my label too far to the side or up here in the status bar. So these, these guidelines can really help you place a label in the right spot. So if I, I'm going to put it in the middle of the screen for right now. And when I let go, you can see that I have a label and that label appears in my document outline. So if I want to see if that works or not, I can go ahead and run it. And we'll look at the simulator over here. And wait for it to compile and load. You can see it's running. And I now have a label in the middle of the screen. And again, that's a pretty boring label. Let me go ahead and click over here to stop it. So one of the things you might want to do is configure how that label looks. And I can do that with what's called the Attributes Inspector, which is this button here. So if I click on it, I can see that I can change, first of all, the title. Um, I'll say, hello. And I change my button to hello. I can change the size of it by increasing the size here. I could change the color. Uh, if I go to custom, I'll get a custom color chooser and I can pick uh, a nice pink there. And so you can see there's a number of things I can change about that button. If I want to change the size of it, I can drag the label smaller or larger. I can change the alignment. So I would encourage you to kind of go through and play with the different things that you can change. And again, I can recenter it if I need to. 
So if I run that to make sure that it is updated on my app, you can see that now the text is changed color. Okay, so that's pretty nice, and I can again I can lay out um, my app with all kinds of different objects from the object library. But what happens if I want to actually have them do something? And in order to do that, I need a way for my label to communicate with the code I create. And the way I do that is with something called an outlet. So in order to make that outlet connection, I need to be able to see my view controller file and my storyboard at the same time. And the way I can do that is with this assistant editor button here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And you can see that it's trying to show me both these, since I don't need this document outline for right now, I'm going to close that so that I can see both my uh, view and my view controller. So I want to be able to make a connection between this label and my code so I can control it. And the way you do that is by hold the control key down and mouse over my label. So with the control key down, if I click and drag, you can see I'm getting a blue line and I can drag here and you can see it says insert outlet or outlet connection. If I let go, I get this dialog box here. The connection type is an outlet. I have to give it a name. I'll call it um, my label. Make sure the type is of UI label. The weak storage uh, represents how Xcode deals with it if the view disappears um, or goes out of, out of memory. We're going to leave it weak for right now and I'm going to hit connect. And you can see that when I hit connect, Xcode inserts this code for me. This IB outlet indicates that I'm creating an outlet in Interface Builder. And you have the at sign there as well. We saw weak. And then it's a variable of name my label. And then like we saw before, where we're creating a type, you put a colon and then the type, it is of type UI label. The exclamation point we'll talk about in future videos, but essentially this means that if my label is not connected at runtime, my program will crash. And if I try to do something to that label and it's not connected, I'm going to get some errors. You notice that also in the margin here, Xcode put in a filled dot. If I put the mouse over the dot, Xcode will highlight what that is connected to. And you can see that it is connected to my label. So now that I've created that outlet between my label and my code, how do I go about actually causing it to do anything? Well, we can actually do that in our view did load method. So I'm going to click here, give myself some spaces, and I'm going to start by typing the following line of code. I'm going to start with my label, and then hit tab or enter. And then if I hit the dot, that's going to give me a list of all the different things that can be done to my label. And there's a large, large, large list. Uh, but the one I'm concerned with right now is I'm just going to change the text color. So I click on it, it comes in, and I'm going to change the text color to, I don't know, how about a blue. And you notice I put a dot in front of it. That's just Swift's way of um, entering the color blue, and you can get a list of that um, online. When I run my app, the first method that's called is view did load when it loads into memory. and this instruction will be run, so hopefully it'll change my label's text to blue. Let's go ahead and run that to, to see if that works. And it's going to take a second to build it. And it's, it's installing it on the simulator. And as it opens up, I should see that it changed the text to blue. So it starts out kind of this magenta pinkish and goes to blue. So you can see that code is working and I've been able to create a successful connection between my label and the code. Let's go ahead and stop this. So we've taken a quick look at labels and let's add another object to our interface, which is a button. So again, I'm going to click over here onto my storyboard side. I'm gonna open my library and I'm gonna start typing button. And you can see there's different kinds of things related to buttons, but I just want this simple button here. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag this button onto the screen. Oh, almost made it. And I'll use these guides to kind of line it up somewhere under my hello label. 
So now I have a button on the screen. Again, if I click on it and go to the attributes inspector, I can change the number of the attributes of that button itself. I'm just going to leave it the default for right now. Uh, let's go ahead and click on my app to run it. I can also hit Command R as a reminder. It's installing. And you can see that I have a button that I click on and nothing happens. So what we need to do is now connect it so that the, the button does something when it's clicked or tapped. And you do that in a very similar way to making an outlet, but in this case we're going to make what's called an action. So I'm going to hold the control key down. Oops, let me get that centered. Hold the control key down and move the mouse over the button, and I'm going to drag it over to my view controller. And notice that I can't put this anywhere I want, but I'm going to put it under my view did load. So if I release it, I get the dialog that says I'm making an action. I'm going to do it in my view controller. Uh, I'm going to call it um, change text, because I'm going to change the text of that label. Under type, I don't want to leave it any. I want to make sure that it says UI button, so that it responds specifically to a UI button. The event is what event triggers this action. In this case, a touch up inside, which just means I touched the button and lifted my finger up, which is probably the most common action. And the argument is the sender, or what object sent that message. So if I hit connect, you can see it creates an IB action. It also creates this connection circle that if I move the mouse over, it shows what it's connected to. The func for, is short for function. It's how Swift knows I'm making a function. And there is again is the name of my function and the sender of type UI button. So let's go ahead and write some code that changes the text of that button. Well, again, I'm going to start, sorry, change the text of the label. So I'm going to start with by clicking my label and then the dot. And then I know I want something to do with text, so I'll start typing text. And then I want the text to equal world. We'll make it hello world. And that's it. I'm just changing the text of my label to world. Let's go ahead and hit Command R to run it. And you can see it's building it. So again, you can see the label text color changed. And if I click on button, now the text updates to world. Notice that if I click the button again, nothing else happens because it's just leaving the text as world. One thing I want to quickly mention is we have been doing a lot of these things like changing the color um, and the size of the label via the interface builder and the attributes inspector. It's important to note that anything that you can do in the attributes inspector, you can do in the code as well. It's just often simpler to do it here. But however, there are a few things that you cannot change in the attributes inspector that you have to change in code. So it's important to know how to do that. But we'll talk about those specific things when we get there. So that about does it for a very quick look at Xcode and buttons and outlets and actions. In the next unit, we'll take a look at more Swift concepts like functions and loops and classes. And we'll also look more at Interface Builder and making some more complicated user interface layouts by using auto layout and stacks.